This is a beautiful day to worship the Lord. He's been good to us this week. Uh, he's good to bring you with us into this sanctuary. We join our hearts and our voices together today to give praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. So would you uh, join me this morning by opening in prayer. Father God, we thank you today for worship and praise. We ask now that as our voices lift heavenward, that you will see our hearts, hearts that have been touched, hearts that have been transformed by the love of Jesus Christ. How can we not but sing to you today? Now may we do that, I pray, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing together this morning, all hail the power of Jesus' name. Raise the reality 
that there have been many times that the church uh, has been spread out, has been in the diaspora, uh, has been underground, in which they had uh, in their separate homes they would have to worship together. We do that. Thank you for your faithfulness and meeting with us each Sunday morning on Shauna Baptist Facebook Live. Thank you for your faithfulness and giving. I have been so impressed as I have been peeking every now and then at uh, the financial report from our church treasurer. Thank you. You have been so good and so faithful in giving. Uh, let me take this moment just to remind you that if you uh, care to use uh, the U.S. mail, uh, the address for the church is found on the church website at shamanfbc.com. Uh, you will also find there a link on where to go if you would care to give by credit card or by uh, debit card. Uh, God bless you for your faithfulness. Uh, we remember our sick among us. I have great news to report to you today that this, this week, uh, Reba Carter, who we've been praying with and for, for a long time, haven't we? Reba gets to come home this week. Uh, she's in rehab. Uh, she's been in the hospital, think about this now, for well over 30 days. Uh, she's 80-something years young, uh, came down with nine other members of her family with the COVID. And she is the last to leave, and we hear she's doing well. And the Carter family tells me they're going to have a great celebration when she comes back home. Uh, I can't wait to see Reba here back at church sometime. I think that would be a wonderful thing uh, to celebrate together. Thank you for taking the prayer list with you. Uh, isn't it amazing how in just uh, one week's time things can change uh, in our nation? You will notice that we have added prayer concerns for peace and justice in our land. That's what we pray for. Uh, those always in the scripture go hand in hand together. And we will pray that prayer for our land and for our country. Thank you for doing that. This is an important week for us at uh, Shamit uh, in that in our interim plan to be able to restart a, a public worship service together. Uh, we created uh, a criteria we call the good to go uh, criteria of looking at uh, several weeks uh, in the past and uh, COVID uh, prevalence in our community. We wanted to make sure that when we would meet again, that we would not be in the midst of a surge of cases uh, in our community. Well, uh, if you look on Facebook today, I did publish for you there uh, in my post this morning the numbers from Chambers County, and it does appear, in fact, that we are uh, in some sort of surge. Something's going on. We know that uh, two weeks ago, if you look at weeks one and two, from two weeks out, there were 16 cases, new cases of COVID. We're already uh, this week in week three, going into week four, we're already double that. And we still have four more days to add to the count. Uh, that's a pretty significant surge. It's enough uh, that the deacons yesterday, as we discussed this, we felt that our projected start date of next Sunday is just not going to work out. Not in a moment like this. We need the curve. We need that thing to flatten down uh, before we would think about meeting together. So stay tuned. Uh, we, we hope to be able to meet, meet together uh, soon over the Family Life Center. Thank you also for those of you who uh, completed the survey online. Uh, we needed uh, to know from our membership that even with all the efforts that we are taking for security and safety in meeting, and I really do believe there are a few churches in Chambers County that are going to the extraordinary efforts that we are going to. Just the good to go criteria itself is a good illustration that we are bending over backwards to make sure we have a safe worship environment. But even with all those efforts, uh, I ask our membership to submit an online survey about uh, would they be attending if we would have a, a public worship service. Uh, and uh, the results have come back in. 60% uh, of you have said no. Uh, you have said that to us that uh, even, even if we do have all those measures, uh, that you still, and you also indicated on the survey why, uh, because it was an equal percentage, 60% of the respondents said that you 
It's either because of the age or because of pre-existing conditions that you have. I want you to know we, we do understand that. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, we will, when we do be able to, uh, are able to be together, we will miss you. We'll be praying for you. But in the, in the meantime, as we are all together, the entire church together, uh, by means of remote Facebook Live, it is a wonderful time we have today to be able to pray, to be able to study of the Word of God together, to encourage one another, and to worship to, together. Let's take a moment, shall we, to pray together. Our Father God, we thank you today for Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins, was raised from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, and the scripture says that, Lord, you came back, Holy Spirit, to be with us today as our comforter and our encourager. Lord, we tell you today, we need that. We need comfort and we need encouragement. Help us, I pray, as a people. I pray for our land, for peace and justice. We pray, God, for love to uh, flow like a mighty river uh, in throughout our land. I pray, Lord, for our leaders that you would give them wisdom to guide us through this perilous uh, desert and journey that we're in now. Bring us to that place of promise that you have for us uh, corporately, individually. Uh, God, we say to you today, we need you more than we have ever needed you before. Now, I ask this morning, God, that the Holy Spirit, wherever we are meeting throughout uh, this world in this public worship service today, meet with us, Lord, in our hearts. Lift us up as we lift you up, God, in worship and prayer. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to step off here just a moment, and Tony and Ken are going to bless us with a song. This corner stone, this 
I would like to read a passage of scripture. We are spending these weeks together looking at the story of Noah. If you have your Bibles, I invite you to open them to Genesis chapter 8, beginning in verse 3, and we'll read down through verse 13. For the scriptures tell us this. The water receded steadily from the earth, and at the end of 150 days, the water had gone down. And on the 17th day of the seventh month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ariad. The waters continued to recede until the 10th month, and on the first day of the 10th month, the tops of the mountains became visible. After 40 days, Noah opened a window, and he made in the ark, and he sent out a raven, and it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove to see if the water had receded from the surface of the ground. But the dove could not find anywhere to perch because there was water all over the surface of the earth. So it returned to Noah and the ark, and he reached out his hand and took the dove and brought it back to himself in the ark. He waited seven more days and again sent out the dove from the ark. When the dove returned to him in the evening, there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Then Noah knew that the water had receded from the earth. He waited seven more days and sent the dove out again, but this time it did not return to him. But the first day of the first month of Noah's 601st year, the water had dried up from the earth. Noah then removed the covering of the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. Let's talk a little bit this morning about new beginnings in life. Uh, I call them the restarts of life. Uh, let me tell you what the two most important restarts that there are in every human being's life. First of all, there is that morning when you reached up to Jesus Christ and you gave your life and your heart to him. That was a pretty good day, wasn't it? Can you remember what it felt like the day that you gave your heart and your life and your family and your career? You just turned everything over that morning that you reached up and Christ took your hand and he saved you. That was a pretty good restart in life. But let me tell you about another really important restart. Not only is that morning when you reached up a good one, but every morning that you wake up, that's a pretty good time for a new beginning and a restart with Jesus Christ. Think about it for a moment. The past is behind you. The future is before you. And here you stand at the starting line of your life with God. A fresh new beginning. That's a new beginning with Him. I want you to do something for me, Tony. She didn't know I was going to ask her this though, right now. But uh, I want you to join with Tony and, re and repeat with me a little phrase. I like this. I want this to kind of soak into your heart here this morning. You ready? Never start, never restart a journey. Never restart a journey. And use the same road. And use the same road. That failed you before. That failed you before. Uh, you, no longer you have to repeat my sermon. We're done. <laughs> that won't work. And I know a lot of people that do that kind of stuff all the time. They restart their life, their journey, on a road that never worked for them before, somehow thinking that things will be better and that things will be different. They won't. You know what you need? You need a new beginning. You need a fresh start with the Lord. Uh, the Bible talks about this so much. In fact, I thought about it this morning, just reading scripture from this point on. It would have been easy to do, but I want to read some very important scriptures to you. Listen to these passages. Revelation 21 and 5 says, And he who was seated on the throne says, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write these things down. They're trustworthy and true. Isn't that a fact? You think 
about the efforts you have made in your life outside of God to find a road to happiness and peace. Do they ever work? There's nothing trustworthy. There's nothing true in those things. We leave and we live by the word of God and we follow his way because there's where every good restart begins. No one tears a piece of cloth, Jesus says, from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. Otherwise, he will both tear the new and the piece from the new will not match the old. No one puts new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins and it will be spilled out and the skins will be ruined. But new wine has to be put into new wineskins. You know what the problem that many of you are having in your life? You are still carrying around the old wineskins. The things that you thought brought you a lot of security, a lot of peace, and this morning you'll stand before me and you'd say, I say, you know what, Tony, they didn't work. They failed me. Well, look, get a new wineskin. Try something different. Try something new in Jesus Christ. That's where he wants you to be in that place of openness to him. Isaiah 43 and 19. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Uh, I, now it's bringing forth. Do, not, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. Where is the way? Where is that river for your life? In the desert? in the place that has been such a dead end for you. In Jesus Christ, we find the answers. Well, there's a lot of scriptures we can look at here today. I want to talk with you this morning. Three things I want to say. I call them the basics. The basics of a new beginning that we find in Genesis chapter 3. And so what are they? Well, number one, release your pain and don't take it back again. <laughs> That's a great place to begin and start this morning. You need to take all of the disappointment and the failure and the things that have not worked for you and you're going to have to let go of them. You have to release them. The first place we need to start for a new beginning is we need to see what old Noah did. The first thing is he began this new restart of his life. It says he opened up the window and he took that old unclean raven <laughs> and he says... He let the thing loose. He released it. And he let it go. I think there's a lesson in there somewhere. The rabbis uh, thought this in their commentaries on the Old Testament. The old rabbis used to believe that the, because that the ravens were considered to be unclean by Old Testament law. Why was that? Well, the reason was is because they fed upon dead things. <laughs> old things. Past things, things that were long dead and gone. That's where ravens congregate. And Noah said, Look, if I'm going to have a new beginning, that guy's got to go. <laughs> we're just going to release him out of this ark. And it says that he did. You know, there is so much carrying dead stuff that we carry about with us in life, things that dirty and diminish things that reduce and restrict, things that taint and tarnish. You see, when we do that, we're feeding upon things that are dead and done and over. Why would you ever do that? The Bible says that what we're to do is that we need to release these things. And so Noah released all that was unclean out of his life. I have a little project that I want us to do this week. It'll be fun together. Uh, I'm gonna, I've helped you with a link on our Facebook page. You may have seen it this morning. Here's a little project. It's several steps. First of all, I need you to get a sheet of paper this week somewhere and a, a brand new blank sheet of paper and a pen. Then, once you've got that pen and paper, I would like for you then I want you to write some things down on the paper. And you say, well, what is it you want me to write down? Well, here they are. I'll tell you. I want you to write on that sheet of paper all of the anger and the disappointment and the bitterness and the resentment that you're carrying in your life right now. I want you to put it on that sheet of paper. 
And I want you to write it down. There's a reason for that. Don't sin by letting anger control you, the psalmist says. Ponder it in your hearts, on your beds. Think about it. And then be quiet before the Lord. Take all of that disappointment. Write it out on that sheet of paper. Add to it all of that rage and the hatred that you may have in your heart. Add to that all the fears and the doubts that you are experiencing. Add to that all the shame and the failure that is still weighing you down and burdening your life. I want you to take that piece of paper and I want you to write all those things down. Now, you say, well, what are you going to do with it? I'll tell you what you're going to do. Look on Facebook Live, look on our Facebook page, Sean the Baptist. You'll see that I, I have referenced a link to a YouTube video that shows you how to make a paper arc. And what I would like for you to do would be to take the sheet of paper uh, that you have written all these things down on, and I want you to make a little paper boat of it. It won't take you long. Follow the instructions. It'll only take you a couple of minutes. Maybe you haven't done this since kindergarten. Then, this is what I'd like for you to do with that. For those of you who live around here, I want you to take it. I want you to take a trip with your Bible, with your little boat, and your heart before God, and just go out to West Point Lake. And stand on the side of that lake. And I want you just to put that thing in the water and just push it out to the Lord and to give it to Him. You've got to start by releasing these things. You can't keep carrying around the things that bring so much destruction and negative to your life. What you need is the power of God. You've got to release these things. I found something. Kylie Santiago said something. She said this in a little poem. She said, The little girl in me died yesterday. I woke up feeling like a woman today. And I'm happy to say that I'm here to stay. Now that's commitment. She's releasing the things that brought death to her. The things that were dead and corrupt and just falling apart. She said, I'm going to take those things and I'm going to open the window of my life and I'm sending them forth. That's the first thing you have to do. Number two, not only do we need to release the pain, but you also need to retain your God. Take hold of Him. Don't let Him go. And so we have this marvelous passage in Genesis 8 and 9. Noah, it says, of the dove, he releases the raven. But it's just the opposite for the dove, because in 8 9, it says that when the dove came to Noah, and you know, that he reached out for, and he took it, and he grasped that thing in his hand. And the dove is representative in the scriptures of Jesus Christ and his presence in our life. And that's what you need to do today to have a new beginning. You need to reach out and you need to retain Jesus Christ. The scripture says to hold on, to take hold of those things that you were, that you were taught. Keep the faith in God. And so you say, well, how does that happen? Well, let me just remind you of three quick things. First of all, let God love you. That's something you ought to take hold of. First of all, you just got to let the Lord love you. We got a new little kid that has arrived in our, we have two actually, uh, that just arrived in our house a couple of weeks ago. And one of them, Stella, no matter how much I try to love that cat, I try, I try to hold it. And she fights me tooth and nail and she scratches me and she runs off. Kind of reminds me of me at times with the Lord where he comes and he tries to love me. And I turn away from this love. And I won't accept the forgiveness and the mercy and the grace that he has for me. You know, 
But it says in this story that the third time that the dove was released and it did not return, it was then that Noah knew that the waters of judgment were gone. Now he knew. And that's what you must come to your place in your life to understand freely. The judgment's over in Jesus Christ. He's a God of love and mercy and grace who comes today and he wants to love you. Why don't you let him? Number two, keep the faith. Keep the faith. The things that you have been taught in Jesus Christ, the things of our faith that we know are tried and true, which bring a solid foundation to living, the importance of the Word of God, of reading it daily, of submitting to its counsel, of fellowship with of like-minded believers like we're doing here today, of worship, of praise, the basics of obedience, all of these things that we know of our faith. Well, let the Lord love you and keep the faith, the things that you have been taught, and then finally, serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. I love this passage in 1 Samuel 12 and 24. But be sure to fear the Lord and serve Him faithfully with all your heart. Consider what great things he was, He's done for you. And when you have, then serve the Lord. Look, there's a world out there. And would anybody disagree with this this morning? It's a dark world out there. People need the Lord. And the only way that justice and peace and righteousness is going to come to this world is if there are servants of God who are willing to serve Him. Are you willing to do that? Look, you need to release the things that are causing you the pain. Second, take hold and grasp hold of Jesus Christ. And then finally this morning, we need to recalibrate our vision. We need to recalibrate our vision. What I want you to know this morning from our lesson in Genesis 8 is that Mount Ariat is out there for you. Even if you can't see it yet, I want you to know that that place of rest, it's out there. You just have to recalibrate your vision. I love this passage of scripture because we see uh, this gradual lowering of the waters to where eventually it says in verse 4, it says that it had, uh, in the seventh month it said that the ark came to rest on our area. We don't think at that point that that uh, Noah even knew it. All he knew was he had rested on something. The reason we think that is because verse 5, it says that in the 10th month, three months later, it was then that Noah saw, it says that he saw the tops of the mountain. And you know, you don't get to verse 13. It's not until verse 13 that it says, well, then Noah took the door off and he looked outside. And it was then that he saw that the waters were dry. If we would backtrack, we would just rewind here a bit in our story. You know, when that ark was still floating around out there in that water, did you know that Mount Ariok? It was there. It was covered over with water. It may be true. But we need in our lives to recognize and to remember. We need to recalibrate our vision of life. Things may be difficult right now. Things may be trying for you and for us as a church. But I want you to know we need to have a vision that, that can see what it is that God has for you and for me. Uh, so how does this happen? Well, recall the vision that God has once gave to you. I bet there's not a person that I'm speaking here this morning that in some way, some place, sometime in your life, the Lord has spoken to you and He's given you a vision of something. You need to recall that vision that God had. Number two, you need to recognize that often that life and circumstance and the waters of circumstance, sometimes they come and they cover over that vision. And difficult times may set into our life of trial to where we don't see that vision or it begins to fade. 
need to recognize that. Those things happen. But number three, that's why I say this morning, you need to recalibrate. You need to recalibrate. And you say, Chuck, why are you using some crazy engineering term uh, to talk about resetting our vision? I'll tell you why, because I love the word recalibrate. Let me define it for you. I'm going to take it right out of Webster's. It's a marvelous word. You engineers are going to love this. Recalibrate, it means this. It means to rectify the graduation of any instrument giving quantitative measurements. And it comes from the word caliber, which means capacity. Let me tell you what recalibrate means. To recalibrate, it is testing your capacity. It is the measure of your capacity in life. And what we find in this story, can I ask you, by the way, where do you feel your capacity is right now? You may say, I ain't got any. <laughs> it's all gone for me. You need to recalibrate, to see the capacity that God has built into your life and what it is that He wants to do for you. Because I guarantee you the caliber of the, of the heart that he is large and it's expansive. And the vision that he wants you to have is one that is big, as big as what God has for you. Let me end with my second favorite passage in 1 Samuel 12, chapter 16, where we find this passage. Now then, listen to these words. Now then, come, stand still and seek this great thing the Lord is about to do before your eyes. Isn't that a marvelous passage? Why is it? Well, here are the steps to recalibrate in our vision. One, you got to stand still. It's kind of what we're doing this morning. We're sitting before the Lord with our Bibles open with the presence of the Holy Spirit with us. Uh, we're, we're standing still before God. You're doing good. Let's keep going. Number two, see. So now the Lord wants to come and he wants to give you a vision. Do you recall in the story of, of, of Saul, the Apostle Paul in the book of Acts, that it says that when, when old Saul was knocked off his horse and the Lord came and saved him, it says to Saul that he was blinded but when the Lord came to him and spoke to him, the scriptures tell us in the book of Acts that it was as if scales fell off the, the, the face of Paul. And as the scales fell off, he was able to see again. Now that's the miracle that you and I need. We need the miracle of a vision, a recalibration of sight. Well, and then that brings us to the now then of 12 and 16 of 1 Samuel. Now, well, what then? Well, that's where I think we should say, after we have stood still, and after we have a vision, then I think we just need to say, you know what? The Lord, He must really desire to do something really great in my life. Oh my, what is it that God has for me? Well, what we see in this lesson today is the basics of every new beginning in life. Release the pain. Don't take it back again. Retain your God and hold fast to the things that you were taught and recalibrate your vision. Listen, Mount Ariel is out there. Even if you at this moment cannot see it, God's out there doing something marvelous for you and me. Father God, we thank you today for that reality. Thank you for the hope that there is in Jesus Christ. Lord, uh, we're floating around in Shaman in our boat, in our ark, and we know that there is Ariad is out there for us. Oh God, help us to have faith in you, to trust you, to keep in step with the Spirit, and to believe. Oh, Father, this is a new beginning. I'm feeling it for this church. There's something exciting that you have for us out there. I cannot wait to see 
what's beyond the new start you have. For I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, these truths call for a mighty response of faith. And there's a song that reminds us of us. We're going to sing it in this time. Tony's going to lead us. Until we meet again next week on Facebook Live, may the Lord be with you.